We actually started, uh, you know, most of the JAK inhibitors, including ruxolutinib. We were the, one of the first two institutions that started the treatment. Uh, the first New England Journal of Medicine was our publication. And uh, so we've had a lot of experience with these drugs. Here's a problem with these drugs. Number one, none of them give you PR or CR. Number two, in other words, there is no disease modification. There is no molecular remission. What they can do is alleviate night sweats, alleviate symptoms, help patients gain weight, shrink splints. In other words, they have good palliative value, but not disease modifying activity. So as a cancer doctor, you know, I want your cancer to go away, not just your night sweats. So the direction of an oncologist is to cure, if possible, or otherwise put the disease into sleep forever. That's the direction that an oncologist does. And so therefore, these drugs are never going to uh, rise to that level that will, I would be content with, because I would like to cure uh, the cancer. So from that standpoint, further development of these drugs is not very exciting. We already know what we can do. Any phase three study is this, that is simply to get the drug approved for the company. It's not to add to the science. There is no additional science that is going to be gotten from all this phase three comparing one from the other, none. It is to help the companies approve their drugs, period. One has to be very clear on this. Patients are not gonna derive additional benefit. We already know that has been established. So what we need is pilot studies, science-directed studies, that are innovative and that can potentially clear the cancer cell and what have you. And this is true for MDS, myelodysplastic syndromes. Uh, this is true for myeloma, for everything else. And there is a, a, a very clear distinction what the agenda is for the pharmaceutical companies and for the scientific community is.